What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp quick tip for you. So today's tip came from one of our SketchUp Essentials community member calls from earlier this week. If you remember, the SketchUp Essentials community is my community for people who want to learn how to use SketchUp. So it's got training included as well as live community calls where you can come and ask your SketchUp questions to make sure that you don't get stuck. So if that's something you're interested in, if you're looking for some more SketchUp help, make sure to check out that 30-day risk-free trial of the community at the sketchupessentials.com slash community. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So the question was, sometimes people have trouble navigating around interior spaces inside of SketchUp. So let's say, for example, that I had the interior of this house model that I downloaded from the 3D warehouse. Um, so right now, if we use what we usually do for, for um, if we use what we usually do for navigation, that's usually gonna be the orbit tool. Well, the problem with the orbit tool is what happens is you start navigating around and you start like running into all these other things in my model, other things like that. And the reason for that is because what the orbit tool is doing is it's navigating or orbiting around a fixed point. So it's basically moving your camera around that central point. And that works great for external models, right? For flying around something because you want your camera to fly around a point. But when you get to the interior, you don't necessarily want that. So what we want to do instead is here's some tips for navigating around an interior space. So the first tip is usually I use the first person camera tools that you can find inside of the large tool set. So you can just right click up in your uh, toolbars and check the box for large tool set to get that to show up. And in particular, we're looking for these four icons right here. And so the first one is the position camera tool. I use this tool for precision placing my camera in an interior um, spot. So instead of scrolling my mouse wheel up, what I do is I select this tool and then I click. And so when I click, what that's going to do is that's going to place my camera at that point. It's also going to naturally or automatically transition me to the look around tool. And so one of the cool things about the position camera tools, you can also set what direction it's facing by clicking and dragging. So let's say I wanted to stand on this point right here and look up at this walkway. What I could do is I could activate this tool, click and drag. And wherever I click and drag my mouse to, the camera is going to look at that point right there. So the other thing about that is you can also type in a height above ground for your camera. So if I was to type in a value of six feet and hit the enter key, that would move my camera six feet above the ground in that location. So you can see how setting my camera up like that is really easy with this tool. And so the second tip is whenever you're in the interior of a building, I recommend using the look around tool in order to set what your camera is looking at. So remember how we talked about the orbit tool moving the camera around a fixed point? The look around tool keeps your camera fixed and just changes the direction that it's facing. So by clicking and dragging, I can look around in here without my, uh, my actual location moving, meaning I don't have to worry about accidentally going through walls or other things like that. So um, the next tip, if you do have to like move around, so generally I recommend using the position camera tool, you can also use the walk tool. So the walk tool allows you to click and drag like this and your camera is gonna move forward and back based on how high you drag your camera or based on how high you drag your mouse up and down. So you can use this to move around inside of your model. And so one cool thing about this is this has almost like a collision detection in it, meaning if I was to move my camera to this point right here, notice how it stops. So because it stops, what that means is that means that my camera is not accidentally gonna go through a wall. So I can use this to really quickly navigate around in here. The other cool thing about that is if you have like stairs in your model, this is going to use the collision detection to figure out where those stairs are. Whoops. And you do need to go a little bit slow when you do this, but you can use this to move up your stairs. So I would prefer the position camera tool when I'm trying to do this, because you can see how it's a little bit twitchy. Um, it's definitely not perfect, but you can use this to move up and down stairs to get to like second levels, other things like that. And so one thing about this, another thing that I recommend is once you get your camera to a point where you want it, like let's say I wanted a camera view that kind of overlooks this living room, I recommend saving camera views so that you can quickly get back to the views that you want. 
So for example, if I was to navigate up here and I wanted my camera to look down on this location, I would just go to View, Animation, Add Scene. Well now, if I was to orbit away from that and I wanna come back to it, I can click on it in order to get back to that scene because it saves my camera location. So what that does is that saves you time of having to re-navigate over and over to different camera views that you know that you're going to use. So that can be a real quick time saver is saving those views. So another tip is if you don't want to navigate around like that, another way that you can do this, and I'm going to use the zoom extends right here, is let's say you want to put your camera in a certain location, but it's currently being blocked. Well, what you can do is you can set a section plane using the section plane tool. And I'm just going to click to set that. I'm going to click on OK. And then I'm just going to move this down just like this. So I'm gonna click on my section plane right here. And I'm just gonna move it down so that I can get into my space. So now with my section plane active, I can navigate down into this space really quickly. And then I can look around in order to set my location. And then I can just right click on this section plane and uncheck the box for active cut. So what that means is that mean that section that means that section plane is no longer showing up. So if you don't want to navigate inside, you could do a temporary section cut in order to do that. One other thing you're want to, going to want to note about that is you can turn your section planes off so that that's not sitting here inside of your view. All right, and then the final tip is let's say that you've got a room like this one that's really kind of narrow and you can't get a lot of the room inside of your view. So what you can do is with the interiors, you can adjust the field of view of your camera using the move or the zoom tool. So what you can do is you can adjust the field of view of your camera using the move tool. And what that means, and so what you can do is you can use the zoom tool to set your field of view. So notice how if I click on the zoom tool right here, I get a little option down in the lower right hand corner. This is field of view, 35 degrees. Well, there's an option over here to hold the shift key and click and drag. And what that's going to do is that's going to adjust the field of view of your camera, meaning your camera will see more. It's like using a wide angle lens for your camera. And so by holding the shift key or by typing in a value and hitting the enter key, you can adjust the field of view of that camera so that you can see more in a room. And notice how this gets saved as a part of your scenes. So if I get in this room, I right click and I click add to add a scene, my field of view in here was like 40 degrees. So my normal field of view for this view is 35. But if I click on this one, look at my field of view, it's adjusting to what my new field of view was inside of this scene. So you can use this to set a field of view inside of a camera view so that you can quickly get back into a space like this one. All right, so that's where I'm gonna end this video. If you are looking for some personalized SketchUp help, including some additional training, um, live call-ins, and a community forum where you can get your questions answered, make sure you check out the SketchUp Essentials community. You can check that out 100% free um, at the sketchupessentials.com slash free. So go check that out. I'd love to see you on the calls and to talk with you in the community. Now, if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.